My text editor of choice these days is Doom Emacs. What is Doom Emacs? Well, it's a distribution of GNU Emacs, but it includes some pre-configuration out of the box. And some of the configuration that's included with Doom Emacs includes the evil key bindings, which are the Vim key bindings, which are fantastic. And one of the videos I've been needing to make, it's been brought to my attention. I've made some Doom Emacs content in the past, but I've never really made a Doom Emacs video for people that have never used Vim. Because I've always just assumed anybody that would be interested in Doom Emacs has probably used either Vim or Emacs before in the past. And that's not necessarily the case. I'm getting a lot of new subscribers to my channel recently that want to check out Doom Emacs, but they've never used Vim or Emacs. So some of my videos in the past, even though they're kind of basic videos, I do expect people to have a certain knowledge level going in. For example, I expect you to already have went through the Vim Tutor and know the Vim key bindings before you ever get into Doom Emacs. Well, I shouldn't do that. So today, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to do a Doom Emacs for noobs. So if I start from the very beginning, let me switch over to my desktop and open up a terminal. And you guys should open up a terminal because we're going to install some software. Because before we can actually install and start using Doom Emacs, we need to make sure that some dependencies are installed on our system. Now I'm on an Arch-based system, so I'm going to use Pac-Man because that's the package manager in Arch Linux. So sudo pacman s to install some software. We need to install the following dependencies. We need to install Emacs, of course. We also want Git. We also need rip grip. We also need FD, which is a find alternative. And you also need the find command itself installed on the system, but almost certainly you already have find already installed if you're running a GNU slash Linux operating system because it's part of the GNU core utils. So install these dependencies here, Emacs, Git, rip grip, and FD. And hit enter and put your password in. Now I already have these installed on my system, so I will decline doing that install. But once you have those installed, now we need to actually install Doom Emacs. To install Doom Emacs, you need to run git clone. So we're gonna git clone a GitHub repository in this case. So do git clone dash dash depth one and then the URL to the Doom Emacs repository, which is at https colon slash slash github.com slash hlistener slash doom dash emacs. And then do a space and then the tilde character, which signifies your home directory, slash dot emacs dot d, because we're going to clone this into dot emacs dot d. I hope that makes sense. I will, of course put this command in the show description. That way all you guys have to do is just copy and paste. But run that git clone. All right, and then once it runs that git clone, it put everything in .emacs.d. We need to run the following command. We need to run emacs.d slash bin slash doom slash, and this is a directory where all the doom binaries live. And then the doom command we wanna run here is install. And then it asks, do we want to generate this environment of variable file? Yes or no, it really doesn't matter for most of us. If you're on Mac OS, I think it matters in a big way. I don't think Doom Emacs will actually work unless you create that file. On Linux, I haven't noticed that that matters at all. Uh, sometimes I answer yes, sometimes I answer no. <laughs> I don't know how that works on Windows. I've never actually run Emacs on any operating system other than Linux. I don't actually use Windows or Mac. I haven't used Windows in probably um, 12 years or so, and I haven't run a Mac since the 90s. At some point during the Doom Emacs installation, it's going to ask, do you want to download and install all the icon fonts? Uh, you're probably going to want to answer yes to that. And you see it finished in 138 seconds, so it took just over two minutes to install Doom Emacs. I think all I need to do now is simply launch Emacs. So how I'm going to launch Emacs here is in my command prompt here, my run prompt here. You guys, if you have a menu system, you can look for Emacs in your menu system. If you have Rofi or D menu, open that. If you want to launch it from the terminal, you can launch Emacs from the terminal. Regardless how you do it, the command to run Emacs here, or Doom Emacs in this case, is simply to run the command Emacs. And this is how Doom Emacs looks out of the box. This is the stock configuration. 
Now let's talk about some commands to run. Space FR, space FR. That searches for recent files. So anything you've ever opened in Emacs in the past will be available for you if you do space FR. Um, that's a command I often use when I first launch Doom Emacs because typically I'm working on something I've already opened before in Emacs anyway. Now in this case, because this is a brand new installation, space FR does nothing. But you could do this to get into Dear Ed, the directory editor, the file manager built into Emacs, do space period. And then you've get this prompt here. It's basically your directory structure here. This is the file manager. What do you want to search for? Now, I'm going to search for something on my system because I know I have a documents folder slash org for org mode documents that I, I typically put stuff here. And then I'm going to look for this document I created for this video, doomemacs4noobs.org. I'm going to hit enter. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. And you can see this is already what we've covered on this video, installing the dependencies and then installing Doom Emacs with the Git clone. And we ran Doom install. Now, there are other Doom commands you could use other than Doom install. There's also Doom sync. You will run that command often. Anytime you change your Doom Emacs config file, you typically are going to have to run Doom sync to make those changes take effect in a permanent way, especially when we start adding software. I'm going to cover that later, but you have commands like doom sync, doom upgrade, doom doctor for diagnosing problems, doom purge for purging orphan packages or packages that are no longer necessary, doom help, of course, for getting help information. Now, the full path to all these doom commands, just like the doom install command, is actually .emacs.d slash bin slash doom space and then whatever command, sync, upgrade, doctor, purge. Now, if you don't want to have to type the full path to the doom binary, you should add the path to the doom binary to your path, your shells path. So in your bash RC or your ZSHRC, you should add this here. What I have highlighted there, export path equals and then home slash dot emacs dot d slash bin colon dollar symbol path all uppercase. Now let me open up a file manager here. I'm going to open up Thunar here on my system because let's talk about where all of these files were placed when we ran the installation. So when you install Emacs, just regular GNU Emacs, which we had to because it's a dependency, right? So we installed Emacs. It creates this hidden directory in your home directory at .emacs.d. And this is where all of the standard config files for Emacs go. You're not going to want to ever play in this directory. Just pretend like that directory doesn't exist because we're going to be playing with inside this directory, .doom.d. This is where the Doom Emacs configuration files are. When we ran that git clone, it placed this stuff here, and it created these files for us. config.el, which is our config file our init.el, this is the stuff that gets loaded when you first launch Doom Emacs, and packages.el, and what that is, is that's where you place packages that you want to install within Doom Emacs, and I'm talking about plugins and extensions. Now, you don't necessarily have to have your Doom Emacs configuration in .doom.d. You could actually in your home directory, there's a folder called .config. Go into .config. You could create a Doom folder within .config and then place your three configuration files in that config.el, init.el, and packages.el in that directory if you would rather use the .config directory. Me, personally, I just go with what's default you know emacs always creates the dot emacs dot d folder and doom when you run that git clone by default it's set to use dot doom dot d so i just leave those in my home directory i know some people are pretty anal about that sort of thing they want all their config files in the dot config folder for me i don't care but if you do care you are free to move it the only thing is you can have a dot doom dot d directory in your home directory and also have a dot config slash doom directory. You can have one or the other, but you can't have both. 
So let me close this file manager and I'm going to zoom in a little more here inside Emacs. And let's talk about your three configuration files, the init.el, the config.el, and the packages.el. And I will actually open these up. So I'm going to open up a second instance of Doom Emacs and I'm going to do a space period to get into the directory editor, dear ed, the file manager. And I'm going to go to dot doom dot d slash init dot el let's open up the init dot el i'm going to zoom in i might have zoomed in a little too far so reading a little bit on the right hand side where i had the note about init dot el this is where you'll find your doom exclamation block you see this here doom exclamation and, and that's all this document is is that massive block that starts with doom exclamation and what this is is this controls what doom modules are enabled and in what order they will be loaded so uh, by the file name init.el this is when you launch doom emacs this is what gets loaded as soon as you launch doom emacs this file is evaluated early when you start up and because of that you shouldn't just add any configuration stuff to this really you don't ever really want to play with the init.el the only thing you do in the init.el really is comment outlines or uncomment lines because you should basically leave it as is the only thing you should do is you see the lines that are uncommented these are modules that are active the lines that are commented out which are the ones with two semicolons in front of them those are modules that are not enabled by default. So if I go through here, for example, you see right here, colon term, and then I have e shill, shill, term, and v term. They're all commented out. Well, you know what? I like using the e shell, so I'm going to uncomment that. And I do like using v term, so I'm going to uncomment that. So now that I have those uncommented, they will be available to me as Emacs plugins when I restart Doom. I'm going to have to do a Doom sync. For all of this to take effect but that's how that works and that's how you should do this you should just go through here and if you know what plugins you want what plugins you don't want just comment out the lines that you don't want uncomment the lines that you do want the really important ones though is this section here colon lang this is for the languages this is for programming languages you know the syntax and the tools that go along with them so whatever languages that you program in or script in all the time make sure you uncomment those lines so emacs lisp is uncommented of course you're going to be using a lot of elisp configuring emacs but some languages that i use on a regular basis i'm going to uncomment haskell i'm going to uncomment javascript i actually don't do much with javascript latex might be a good one to also have uncommented uh, sometimes I do stuff with Lua. Markdown is already uncommented. Org is already uncommented. I do sometimes you know, edit PHP files. I play a lot with Python. I definitely want that uncommented. I think the only other one I might uncomment it is uh, YAML because sometimes I do edit YAML files. So what I'm going to do is escape to make sure I'm in normal mode. And then I'm going to do a colon WQ for write and quit to quit out of that. Now that we've done what we needed to do with the init.el, the next configuration file I want to tackle is actually the third one that I've got listed here, packages.el. So I'm going to launch another instance of Doom Emacs here, and this time I'm going to get into the directory editor and go to .doom.d slash packages.el. Let's launch that file. And this file, there's really nothing in it. It is a whole bunch of comments, but that's it so what you want to do is go to the end of the document and then type i or o on the keyboard to get into insert mode i'm going to type o because that gets me a new line and puts me into insert mode and then what you want to do here is list all the packages the, all the plugins for emacs that you want to use within doom emacs and these are packages or plugins that were not included in the init.el so this is extra stuff so how you do this is you run this command. So within parentheses, do package exclamation point space and then name of plugin. 
Now, of course, you wouldn't put name of plugin, you would put the actual name of a plugin. So let's do this for an example. So if you're a brand new Doom Emacs user and you've never used Emacs or Vim, definitely install this package here. Package exclamation space evil dash tutor. And then hit escape and then do colon WQ for write and quit. Now, because we edited our init.el and our packages.el, let's go ahead and close this Doom Emacs window as well. It's asking me, do I want to really close? Yes, I do. And then open a terminal. But because we edited those files, the init.el and the packages.el, we actually have to run a Doom sync for those to take effect. So I opened up a terminal and I'm going to run this command dot emacs dot d slash bin slash doom because I have to type the full path to the doom binary because again it's not in my shells path. And then this command here sync and it's pulling down any extensions any plugins that I added to the packages dot el file. It's going to install them for me and it's re rebuilding doom emacs basically. So the next time I launch it, anything that I added to the init.el should be enabled and anything that I added to the packages.el should be available for us as well. And I should mention that adding stuff to the packages.el file is the correct way to install plugins in Doom Emacs. On videos, you guys have seen me install software using other methods and those other methods though are a temporary thing like if I do meta X on the keyboard and run package install which is command built into Emacs if I do package dash install name of plugin it will install that plugin for me in that session of Doom Emacs but when I restart Doom Emacs that plugin won't be available right <laughs> to actually make changes permanently the correct way to install plugins in Doom Emacs is to use the packages.el file all right that sync has completed so let me close that terminal and I'm going to relaunch Doom Emacs and let's see if our changes took effect and the easy way to figure out if our changes took effect or not remember we added evil dash tutor to our packages.el. Let's see if that plugin is available for us. So I'm going to do meta X, which is alt X on the keyboard. And I'm going to type this command evil dash tutor. And you see the very first option is evil dash tutor dash start. I'm going to hit enter. Let's run through the evil tutor. So this is the Emacs evil tutor. It is a tutorial on how to use the evil mode key bindings, which are the Vim key bindings. It's basically a Vim tutor. It's just a Vim tutor with Emacs in mind because it's got some Emacs specific stuff in here as well. I don't want to turn this into a Vim tutor or a Emacs evil tutor, but I will cover just some of the basics. So if I page down on the keyboard one time <laughs> in my case, because I'm zoomed in so far, but do J on the keyboard for down and eventually you will get to this diagram HJKL. If I hit L, I move right. If I hit K, I move up. If I hit J, I move down. Of course, H goes left. All right, so now that you've figured out how H, J, K, and L work, these are the navigation keys. That's really the most important lesson to learn. I won't cover much of the rest, but I will say evil mode Emacs is very much like Vim in that it's modal, and there's really two modes you need to know about at first. You need to know about normal mode, which you're automatically in, and you know you're in normal mode if you can navigate with HJKL. <laughs> That's how you know you're in normal mode. You can't just start typing a word and stuff happens, right? Now, if you want to get into the other mode that's very important, insert mode, hit I on the keyboard. So if I hit I, now I'm in insert mode. You see it says insert at the bottom left hand side of the screen there. Now I can actually start typing stuff. So if this is a line of text, exclamation point. I could hit enter and start a new line. And then when you're done entering the stuff you want to enter, you need to get back into normal mode. So hit escape on the keyboard. <laughs> get you back into normal mode. And now I could J or K or L or whatever to navigate around. Now let's talk about uh, copying and pasting and deleting. Let's talk about deleting first. So if I wanted to delete a line, I'm going to go back to that line I created. I'm going to delete it. DD for delete a line. DD. Now, maybe I didn't want to delete that line. Well, in normal mode, just type U for undo. So DD to delete a line, U to undo. Let's talk about copying a line. YY for yanking a line. 
Let's, and then if you want to paste it, just P on the keyboard, paste it. P again would paste it again, or period on the keyboard repeats the last command you just entered. So those are a few very basic commands. If I typed DW for delete word, it deletes the word I was on. If I type D dollar symbol, which is the end of the line, it deletes everything from my cursor to the end of the line. For this in action, I'm going to go into the middle of this line. I'm going to do D dollar symbol, and it deletes from my cursor to the end of the line. Let me undo that. And what if I want to delete all three of these lines? Well, I could do DD, 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 but that's inefficient. Let me undo a couple of times to undo everything. What if I did 3DD for delete three lines? That works as well, U to undo. I could also do 3YY to copy or yank th these three lines. And if I did a P for paste or put, you see it actually pastes those three lines. Now, for those of you that want a more in-depth tutorial on the evil key bindings or the vim key bindings, what I strongly suggest is you run through the evil tutor. Or if you are a visual learner, look for two videos I did a couple of years back. I did the vim tutorial part one and part two. Look for those two videos on my channel. I cover all of the basics as far as vim key bindings. The last thing I want to discuss here, I'm going to do a space FR for recent files, and I'm going to get back into my org document that I created, you know, for purposes of this video. By the way, I will share this org document I created. I will uh, post a link to it or something in the show description if you guys want this. It's really not a very lengthy document. It's just some notes I had for the show here. But the last configuration file I wanted to discuss, we already talked about the init file and the packages file, config.el. That is the file where 99% of the time you want to make a configuration change to Doomy Max, the config.el file is the one you need to be playing with. That is where you change like custom settings, things like maybe you want to change the font size or the font face or some setting within a plugin that's already activated within Doomy Max. Typically, you do that in the config.el. So if I do space period to get into the directory editor here, and I'm going to go to .doom.ds, and I'm going to open up config.el and zoom in. This is what this file looks out of the box. But again, if you wanted to change some things, you can. For example, I'm just going to pick this empty space here. I'm going to type I on the keyboard for insert mode, and I'm going to run this command. And you can run this command too. Set Q space doom dash theme space. And then a single quote and then the name of the Doom theme I want to set here. By default, I think the default Doom theme is called Doom 1 or Dark 1 or something, but the one I want is Doom Dash Pale Knight. Another thing I want to do is I'm just going to paste this line here for you guys to see. Set Q, Doom Dash Font. We're going to set the font, and for me, I'm going to set the font to Family Mononoke nerd font. I love the Mononoke nerd font. And I'm going to set it to size 15 because by default the Doomy Max font is a little small for me. Size 15 is about where I want it normally. And so I'm going to paste these lines here. Now I'm going to do an escape to get back into normal mode. I'm going to do colon WQ for write and quit. I'm going to open a terminal and I don't know if I really need to do a Doom sync for changes in the config.el. I know you have to do them anytime you edit init.el or packages.el. I think config.el, you don't necessarily have to run the sync, but since it just, it just takes a second to run the sync, I went ahead and did it. And if I relaunch Doom Emacs, did my changes take effect? Yes, I can already tell you that the font is a little bigger than the default font, so those changes did take effect. So let me do a space FR for recent files and get back into my notes here. And I think that's all I wanted to cover here on this Doom Emacs for Noobs video. I hope I was able to demonstrate that it's not that hard. It was very quick to actually get Doom Emacs installed. Two minutes, right? When we got it installed. And it's really not that hard to configure once you understand the three main configuration files. The init.el, the config.el, and the packages.el. Uh, you don't have to 
ever really learn ELISP. I mean, it would be nice if you knew a little ELISP, you know, to write a configuration file, but you don't necessarily have to. Doom Emacs really takes some of the pain points away, right? And I would say it even takes some of the pain points away from you guys that spend hours and hours and hours configuring Vim. There's no reason to have dozens and dozens of plugins installed in Vim and to have a thousand line plus VimRC. If you guys are spending all of that time configuring your Vim, you're wasting so much time. Just install Doom Emacs because a lot of that stuff you're trying to get to work inside Vim, Doom Emacs already has it out of the box. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Akami Channel, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Caleb, Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Doom Emacs for the noob, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Oh, I just tried to quit OBS with colon WQ.